بیننده بخش پایانی اخبار دنیای مسیحی هستید با ادامه خیزش مردمی در ایران واکنش های جهانی هم به اون افزایش پیدا کرده حاکمیت نیست برای پمپاژ پروپاگاندای خودش دست به کار شده در گفتگویی که پیشتر با املی شریدر نویسنده در اورشلیم پست داشتم پرسیدم چگونه می توان با این پروپاگاندا مقابله کرد با هم ببینیم I've seen your support and solidarity with uh, for Iranian revolution taking uh, place in Iran as we talk. How do you assess the international support and coverage so far? Well, I think one of the key messages from this whole campaign has been that the response from the international community because of social media and because of the power of social media has actually helped in this instant and it's helped raise awareness for what's happening in Iran, not just, of course, what we hear about in the Western world, which is the nuclear deal and maybe Iran's funding of global terrorism. But on top of all of that, we're talking about a dictatorship, a brutal regime which actively oppresses their own people, in fact, murders their own people, as unfortunately we're seeing again with these protests in the streets of their own country. So the human rights issue really has risen to the top of the agenda internationally through social media. Media and through media and all I have to say about this is that it's about time because for over 40 years the people of Iran have been dealing with this and the West despite the fact that they're supposed to be a bastion of liberal values true liberal values and progressive values equality between men and women we have not stepped up enough when it comes to supporting the people of Iran against this dictatorship. I think that it really, I can't even tell you how many messages I've received in the last week or so from Iranians saying, we love Israel, we want peace with Israel, we don't accept the regime's propaganda and what we've been fed. And if you look back further prior to the Islamic Revolution in 1979, the Israeli people and Jewish people, but Israeli people specifically, and the Iranian people were very, very close. They had regular relations, they had regular business ties, There was a lot of travel between the two countries. So historically, there is a similarity and a friendship and actually a love between the two peoples. And I think that you would see that if you spoke to almost any Iranian on the street. And you'd also see that if you spoke to almost any Israeli on the street as well. As an Israeli woman, we want peace with the Iranian people. What we don't want is this global funder of terrorism that has hijacked the country of Iran for a radical agenda that's destabilizing the entire Middle East, from Yemen to Syria to Lebanon. I mean, the biggest victims of this Iranian regime aren't actually Israelis. They're Arab Muslims in other countries who are being targeted by these terrorist organizations that the Iranian regime continues to fund instead of investing in their own people and their own infrastructure. And that has to stop. You tweeted um, about regime's disinformation campaign as protests spreading across the country. How do you think should the world face or react to this disinformation? Well, I think that there's been, I've, I'm in touch regularly with a lot of Iranians on the ground, as well as Iranians in the diaspora community. And this is a message that I've been um, receiving from them about the content that's being put out, especially in Farsi, um, claiming that this, uh, this revolution isn't really a revolution. It's just about hijab. It's just about the forced head coverings. That's not the case. That's not the case from almost any protester that I have spoken to or even heard of. The only people who are speaking this way are people who have absolutely no idea what's going on in Iran. In other words, many people from the West. Or you have people who are with the regime, who are trying to minimize the impact of these protests, which have grown, which are continuing to grow, and which will continue to grow because the people of Iran are completely fed up with this. And I want to add one more thing, that it's incredibly disappointing as a feminist myself, as an Israeli American, to see that there are elected representatives in the US, such as Ilhan Omar, who have been cozy with the Iranian regime supporters um, from day one. She has opposed sanctions on the Iranian regime. And the hypocrisy of her, her response, the only thing she said thus far is that women should be free to choose. Of course, women should be free to choose. But that's not the only issue going on in Iran today. And to take it down to only that issue, because this was the breaking point, this was the straw that broke the camel's back, is really doing a disservice to the fact that these people, the Iranian people, they don't want reform. They don't want just, oh, now it's okay that we can choose whether or not we wear hijab. They want an end to the Islamic regime. Enough. We need regime change in Iran for the sake of human rights.
Uh, in your uh, latest article on Jerusalem Post, you mentioned, sadly, the West appears to be failing Iranian people yet again. What are some significant and more serious steps the West can and should take to support Iranians? Well, I think that, first of all, if we circle back to the U.S. and their initial reactions, there was silence for too long. That's number one. Number two, we need to stop acting like the nuclear deal is at the top of the agenda. Of course, this is an issue, but we shouldn't be making a deal with a regime that literally is opening fire on their own people on the streets of Tehran. I think this is absolutely outrageous. It's against everything that uh, the United States claims that they stand for in terms of values. So to even negotiate with these people is just unacceptable. Uh, I think that Blinken's response when he said that they sanctioned the morality police is almost insulting to the people of Iran because the morality police don't have any international transactions. So to act as if that's taking a concrete stand against the Iranian regime is just doing a disservice to everyone involved. I think the United States and all other Western allies need to double down on sanctions that are targeted against Iranian uh, regime officials and their families who are living in other countries. We've seen just in the last few days, the blatant hypocrisy from some of the children and grandchildren of senior officials of the Islamic regime. And we know that this has been the case for decades. It has to stop. These people have to be held accountable. Iran needs to be held accountable for their activities, not only within Iran and the human rights violations there, but how they're exporting this to the rest of the world as well. That as an Israeli and as an American, I'm with you 110 percent. We want a regime change in Iran, not just, of course, for our own security and for the security of the world, quite frankly, but also because your human rights matter. Masa Amini matters. Women's rights globally, but also in Iran, matter. And we need to do a much better job of defending those values that we claim we hold dear and speaking out against the violations that we're seeing decade after decade now from the Islamic regime in Iran. به این ترتیب به پایان برنامه می رسیم سپاس از همراهیتون و به امید آزادی ایران تا هفته آینده ب